fixing the money thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to tell you, but we are in one of the most crucial times in the history of our nation. And you know, maybe the world, because as America goes, so goes the world. We've never had more economic challenges and things going on. We have rioting in the streets and the, the divisions that we're seeing between men, women, ethnicities, all of the things that we see going on put us in one of the most defining hours of our nation. That's right. Well, according to NBC News, 80% of voters say that America, as you said, Dorinda, is out of control. Violence and crime are on the rise and facing serious problems in our nation. Is there a solution? What are we doing wrong? Politics are complicated, nasty, but they create the laws that are going to have a dramatic effect on your ability to prosper. So let's get into it today, Drenda. It's a great day to be free. It is. You Amen. know, Gary, you've been sharing a series about these very things, the framework with which we prosper in. You know, we, yeah. we all want to have a good life, a happy life. We all want to live uh, free. We want to have our, our finances in a good place, our faith in the right place, our families yes. in the right place. But this series, you shared how the framework is crucial. Tell me a little bit about that. I think, Drenda, that I'm, I'm going to use a term that a large major, a large part, not maybe, I don't know how many, but a large part, a large number of Christians miss this part of prospering. You know, our key scripture through this series has been 2 Corinthians 9, 6, which says, you know, remember this, Paul says, uh, you know, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. And we use that, we use that so often, but we forget the definition. I mean, sowing, reaping are verbs, meaning that we're doing something. But what are we doing? Where are we doing it? With what are we doing it? So if I would say to you, Drenda, you need to sow, and you never heard of it before, what would you think I was talking about? Right. You would, where, what? Or how about reaping? How do I reap? Where do I reap? When do I reap? So that's, that's the process of, of the sowing and reaping, of, of, of prospering. But that doesn't happen in a vacuum. Right. Because sowing and reaping's goal, for instance, if you're gonna raise corn, okay, let's say you're gonna farm, you're gonna raise corn. Your objective is not corn. Your objective is to take that corn to the market and change it to money. So your, your perspective of the process has to be in line with the end result and the, the transferring of that corn to money is called the marketplace, which is governed by all kinds of laws and rules and taxation and so many things that affect your prosper. You could have right. the greatest corn crop in the world. Yes. But if corn prices collapse and or you're taxed at an extreme rate of taxation, mm -hmm. your prosperity is going to be very limited, not based on the process of sowing and reaping. So we just can't read 2 Corinthians 9, 6, right. sowing and reaping. It happens within a framework. So I, I say this framework has a great impact. Sure it does. And, and, it, it, and we've seen that as we've traveled the world. Exactly. There are nations where the resources are abundant, mm -hmm. but the uh, yeah. governmental structure, the framework with which the people are living oppresses them and keeps them from being able to actually enjoy the fruit of their exactly own labor. Right. Exactly. So right. they're working, the resources are there. Yep. Like you said, they're sowing, yep. but they're not able to reap That's of right. their own work. And the reason why is That's right. government. That's right. Laws. So this framework, the laws that this happens in are prospering. This, this process of prospering is put in place by politicians and the the laws. And here's what 100 million people are doing wrong in this country, which means they have no right to complain because 100 million people, Drenda, are not voting mm. for the politicians that make the laws that govern their prosperity. Mm. So if you're going to complain about economics or prosperity or whatever, and you're not voting, you have no right to say anything mm. because the politicians that make the laws are put there by the people that vote 
to put them right, there. Right, but a lot of Christians will say, now, Gary, that's not spiritual. <laughs> what would you say to that? They're like, well, I have the kingdom of God and that's all I need. Uh, yes, we do have the kingdom of God and it supersedes the kingdoms of this world. However, the kingdoms of this world still have an impact, right? You live, you are a citizen, yes, in heaven, mm -hmm. but you need to check your passport because you are still a, <laughs> still a citizen of the country with which you United are States, lived, right. which means that my livelihood is going to happen within that framework of the United States, which is so important that that nation sets its laws in agreement with right. God's laws of righteousness right. and allow them to prosper and to keep what they make and to prosper and, to, you know, not have this, this mm -hmm. corruption or uh, t tyrants or whatever stealing their ability to prosper. Right. Our form of government, the United States, where the people govern, they, they elect officials and the actual people will have the say and they govern, that system has created and crea caused America to be the, the most prosperous nation in all of history. More millionaires, mm -hmm. more inventions of any nation in history was, has been, have been created by the United States of America. And that is all because of the system of economics that America has chosen, which is capitalism. Free enterprise. Which, free enterprise, which means you have incentive to produce. Unlike socialism, communism, and those other forms of economics, uh, you know, uh, uh, governance takes from the people with the, in, with the intent of distributing it back out to the people, but it forcibly takes it. And of course, we could say we have some of that happening now with the high tax rates and things. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that the American dream has always been, if I build it, I can keep it. And thus I have a future. I can build my future and I can, I can invent, I can dream, I can, I can grow corn, I can grow what I want to grow. They're not going to tell me what I have to grow and I'm going to prosper and build my life and have the ability to have that happen. And that's, that's vital. Trent. It is vital. Comes down to one word I'm thinking, and that's freedom. Freedom. Absolutely. And the Bible says it is for freedom that Christ came and that he has freed us not to be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. We might think of that yoke of bondage as sin, uh, but also that yoke of bondage can be that you're yoked by a government that is oppressive and you talk about socialism and you talk about communism yeah, and you do. talk about different forms of government that have, have oppressed people and have never worked on the earth because they're not biblical. And the Bible says, if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. That really is capitalism oh, yeah. in the bottom line or free enterprise. You work, you get to eat from your own labor. You don't work, you don't have. But socialism dumbs down that where the yeah. those that are in power take from those that do the work and everybody gets the same uh, yeah. reward. And, long, and it's all scriptural. Is how it? long would incentive last it doesn't if everyone last. got the same paycheck right. with no one, without doing anything different? In other words, right. eventually they'd all start doing less and less and less because what difference does it make? I get the same paycheck if I do it or not. I'll just slow down and why, why tax myself? And that's what happens in socialism. The productivity just plummets. I mean, by 50%. The nations that tried this experiment, Russia, you know, Cambodia, all these nations, their productivity just crashed. And so in productivity, if you can't motivate someone with profit, the next and only next step is, is force. And this is what happens in these governments is that they have to force the people to work. And you have these incredible, you know, hardships on the people. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that we're free in America and we have the opportunity in America to prosper in the framework. There's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of resources. We need to understand that if I prosper, I'm not hurting you. No. You can prosper. Because there's not a limited, that's the whole lie is that lack. La exactly. And lack is a lie. It makes us think there's only so much right. and that we have to divvy it up. But that's not the truth, is it? Not there at all. are plenty of resources. God created this earth and He put all the resources that needed to be here to supply all of the needs of people. But what happens, the lack comes from those that oppress and hold back and, and contain and won't allow people to prosper, won't allow right. people to benefit from their labors and instead take what they worked for. But lack is a lie and it's used to control 
you and I. It's used to make us fearful. It's, u- it's used, honestly, to make us feel like we have to look to government as God. And that's what I love about your series, Gary, is that you make it very clear that government cannot be God. And anytime no. we look to government to become God, we get into serious trouble because we forfeit our freedoms trying to get security from a a government that is run by men that will turn evil and tyrannical whenever given too much power, which is why our founding forefathers set up our governmental system based on the Word of God, the Levitical law. And when George Washington was, he was encouraged by all the people to be the king, he refused. He refused because they had already come out of the king of England and the oppression, the religious oppression, not allowing them to worship God, not allowing them to benefit from their own labors. They had already lived under a king and he did not want America to be a system where we had a tyrannical king who told us we couldn't do what this or we could do that. So the Bill of Rights were put in place to give you the freedom of religion. The very first thing our founding forefathers knew that to have a free society was to honor God. God, to put him first and give people the freedom to worship God on their own, to be able to choose to worship God and how they did so. And then also to protect our right from tyranny by giving us the ability to have a gun to defend ourselves. Because and if you can't vote. defend yourself, tyranny is standing at the door to be able to, to vote, vote. You have and to, vote. to have representation uh, for in the government that right. we it's put there so and vital. to change those people out so yeah. we we'll never be a, t- a tyrant. So these 100 million people need to vote, especially Christians for sure, need to vote because it's your voice that defines the nation. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.